to say is Mark McGinn, Managing Director of Verismic. I'll pass over to Mark now as we begin. Okay, thank you Charlotte. Welcome everybody. Today what we're going to be going through is self-service password reset and operator level password reset. One of the simplest ways for us to be able to reduce the workload, the associated overhead, with performing password resets, account unlocks, or validation of users at the service desk level. Organizations like Gartner or Forrester estimate that approximately 30% of help desk calls can come purely from password resets alone. And considering how high that is, that can be a significant workload on the service desk, and therefore this can be one of the simplest ways of reducing that, as well as increasing both security and the service level that we offer out to our users. So in front of us today, we're looking at the logging prompt. The standard place where a user is going to be realizing, first of all, that since they changed the password before the weekend began, what they've done is they've, rec they've forgotten that password. So rather than picking up the phone and having to call into the service desk or to the help desk and ask for somebody to reset that password, and at that point when they do that, that service desk operator or help desk operator needs to know who they are and if they are who they claim to be, instead of making that call, they can simply see either from an XP perspective or from a Windows 7 perspective as a credential provider, they'll be able to immediately see the capability to perform a reset on their system. So here we can see on the Windows 7 system, forgotten your password, click here to use the system. Or on the XP system, a very visible floating window, which is customizable as well with the graphics here as well, the ability to click in, and all they have to do here is to enter their username, and this will begin to go through the validation questions to validate their identity. Now looking at the the window that we see here, this is customizable, all the different text, the logos and so on, so we can really be presenting your corporate view. So as we step through, we'll be presented with questions that they've previously answered, and we'll go through the registration process a little bit later on. So here we're being asked for three of the four digits of our government ID card, so one, you know, four here, and here three of the characters from my mother's no maiden name. And this is a feature that we have available, which is optional, called answer masking. So that if people are watching this action take place, they're not able to see from what's being typed on the keyboard the entire answer for that user. And at the end of that sequence, they can put into here a new password. And this password still needs to be meeting any historical or complexity requirements. And we can be prompting them to remind them of those if we need to be. But at the end of that sequence, very quickly, that user's been able to reset their password and log into that system. And that's the key thing for us. We want this to be a matter of seconds in order for that user to gain access. Because the cost associated with a password reset isn't just the cost of supporting that user from the back end, but also the cost to the business for that user not being able to access their system. Even if it's just five or 10 minutes for the total sequence to be done there, we have two people involved at the very minimum. Or if it has to be escalated to a, a higher level because of security requirements, that cost can significantly increase. So that's the simplest way of getting the system or getting the users logged in. But I also already mentioned that the user has had to register within the system previously. So what I'm going to do is just log into here as a user that hasn't registered. And registration is an important part of any self-service solution. And we need to make this as seamless, as quick, as simple as possible as we go through. Now I'm going to log in as administrator, which is normally a user that we would exclude from registration. But as I log in here, what we have is a routine that's checking anybody that logs into the environment and validating if they've actually registered with the system at all. And as they log in, if they haven't registered, we could be switching on a mode that we call user registration prompting. So that those unregistered users we'll get a reminder that they haven't registered and a customizable message to let them know that registration is for their benefit. It's something that will help them in the future. And as well, we can allow them to snooze so they can postpone this till later on or we can be enforcing this so that users must register. And the important part of this for self-service is that the greater the coverage that you have within your environment for the self-service system, the more efficient 
the more benefit you're going to get from this system. And we need to keep that administration as low as possible so that over a longer period of time, while your IT department have other priorities that really be at the forefront of their mind, something like the system may fall to the back of the priority list, to the bottom of that list. So an automated system to detect these new users or the, new, or the user changes to make sure that everybody is registered within the system is essential. And we can as well be making sure that users remember their questions, regular optional validations of those to make sure that the data is consistent. And notice here, as I step through the registration process, we're automatically picking up that user's email address for a couple of reasons. If I switch across then to my management interface, what we've shown so far is a very quick example of users performing the reset. So we've done this from the user perspective. And that's a service that we've been able to deliver out to the organization. But it's also a very important service in that it's a security change to the environment. Everything that's happening within the system is logged within an audit trial. So at the back end here we have a web server with an associated database, either a free database that we provide here, or a link to an existing database such as Microsoft SQL or Oracle. And all activities, all actions taken within the system are logged here for security purposes. They're available for reporting, so we can see here just how many people are registered within the system, but what activities have happened recently, and the level of return that we're getting from our investment within here as well. So we can actually prove the benefits that this system is bringing to our environment. So that's reporting that's available to us whenever we look into it. But we can also be integrating this with the existing help desk or service desk. And we could do that in a couple of ways. One of them is that the action that I took just before was a user self-service request. So they never actually touched the help desk at all. But that help desk really, or well, the service desk, should be logging all types of transactions like that because it's a central point. And if we don't track that, then we're not really tracking all of the services that we've offered. So configured within the system is the ability to integrate with systems that can automatically process emails. So here we can see the help desk of Verismic has received a password reset report it's come from the specific user. And that's one of the reasons we're using the email address from the users. So it can be automatically processed for that user as an individual. It can be logged. It can be categorized. It could automatically be closed within your system as well. And the information that we provide as part of that email is customizable and can include specific information so we know who's done it, what system they were on when they tried to do this, and also what their address was. So we can always trace back to understand who, when, where, and what the result was. And from the user perspective, we can also see a message being sent to the individual to thank them for using the system, and in case to verify that they are the people that have used the system as well, in case somebody is trying to use the system. And we can have this for success and for failure as well. So an important part to integrate this into existing service tasks. So that's reacting to a self-service reset. What we can also be doing is integrating directly into the service desk console as well. So I'll launch this manually from my system tray here, but this could quite easily be launched from within your service desk console as well, with the idea being that even with a self-service system, not everybody will do this themselves, they may still need to call into the help desk. They may prefer to, so an operator still needs to perform the reset, or they may be calling in for other purposes. As such, the person taking that call or handling that request still needs to understand the identity of that person calling in. And we handle this within the Verismic Operator module. So within here, the operator simply chooses the action that they're going to be performing in this case a reset password, or simply validating the identity of that user. And they again put in the username of the person calling in, and they can then step through a sequence of the questions that have been registered to validate the identity of the person that's calling in before performing any type of action on their behalf. And unlike the self-service reset, in this case, 
if they reset a password for a user, this will be forced to change the next time the user logs in. So only for a single login period will a user have a password that's known by the service desk as well. So exactly the same sequence, but designed for use by the help desk operator. And again, all of those actions being audited and logged within the system. And this means that we can streamline self-service operations. We can make it far simpler for service desk operators to be able to provide this type of response and service to end users. We can make this far more secure in that those operators don't need password reset bytes within the Active Directory to perform the reset. They can only do this for users that have gone through the validation request and all actions like this are audited. And as well, this can be supplementing other types of security measures as well so that any type of request to the service desk, the user's identity can be validated and we can reduce the risk of phishing attacks or social engineering attacks by people calling into the service desk and requesting things where a service desk operator has no way of truly validating the identity of the user. So many ways of putting the system in and making use of that. So a few technical aspects about the system itself. There's a pure web-based console for access within the system, so people that are external or simply on the kiosk systems could be logging in and registering and using the system via the web browser. There is an agent component that can be deployed as a single file MSI, very simple to deploy, and also is automatically updating itself as well with updates to the agent or new features. So administration overhead is extremely low ongoing. And the configuration options available allow us to control the behavior of the system, so whether users need to register within the system, whether it's a forced registration, and also how regularly they need to validate their identity and their questions within the system as well. We can be controlling who is allowed to register, who is excluded from the system, so that we can have special accounts, whether they be groups or individual users, excluded because maybe there are important administrative accounts that shouldn't be registered in this type of system. So we have the control over who is allowed to register and use the system. And as mentioned earlier on, we can personalize the system from virtually any kind of text within the system, from the welcome messages, information on the website, the logos that we have within each of the different interfaces, even down to the level of individual labels within the system across multiple languages, including, if there's a language we don't support, being able to add that language into the system as well. So a highly customizable and streamlined for implementation. And the questions that we ask for people to register, we could be confirming how many they need to be registering with. So maybe we ask for eight when they register, but we only ask three or four of them when they, re when they actually go for a reset. So we'll build a pool of questions with a randomization of when we actually ask them as well. And we have security options to control what kind of questions are available, what type of answer can be put in place, the format of that, the security, the length of that, and obviously the questions themselves. There's a pre-built list of questions included within the system to get you started, but any type of question that's specific to your organization or the types of business that you have can be put in within the system as well. And throughout all, throughout the entire system, the administration is designed to be an absolute minimum. So from the auditing, the reporting, understanding the licensing. So the system is licensed based off purely registered users and can automatically reclaim unused licenses from levers in the system so that we can maintain your license count at the lowest possible level to maintain this automatically. But throughout all, we're able to prove the benefit of the system to the organization. This is a system that makes a true difference to the ability for the service desk to provide a service, reducing the workload, improving the service level out to the users. And it's not just a promise that savings can be made. It's a system that proves the savings that have been made. So what we have there is a very brief overview of each of the main capabilities of the system. Very simple to access, to perform research for the users, which is key. Secure, accessible, 
for the operators and provable return on investment through the reporting and the auditing engine. So if you'd like to know any more information about the system itself, please visit us at verismic.com. We have a lot of information about the solution there, white papers, information about the different features, many frequently asked questions as well. And the software itself is available for a free trial, fully functional, so that you can see just how simple it is to install this software within your environment and begin to be get benefits within a matter of hours. And if you have any additional questions, please don't hesitate to contact us at info at So thank you very much for your time, and we hope to work with you in the future.